the heroes of the Maidai in Kazakhstan program are foreign specialists, ambassadors and volunteers who link their faith, albeit not for long, with the country in the center of Eurasia. They talk with love about Kazakhstan, their activities and most importantly, their life today. The camera will film the program heroes from early morning until late evening. We introduce viewers to those who help build a new economy and promote Kazakhstan's integration into the world community. People of Kazakhstan will see amazing places of the country they live in, which they know but sometimes do not notice its uniqueness. Hi, my name's Tony Mason. I'm an Englishman currently living in Atirao in Kazakhstan. You join me at the center of the East-West Bridge over the Ural River. On the left of me is Europe and on the right of me is Asia. We're off to join my wife, so let's go into Asia. Since ancient times, the conditional border between Europe and Asia has shifted, moving further and further to the east of the Eurasian continent. One of the most modern definitions is that the border extends along the Ural mountain range and the Caspian Sea's northern coast. According to other versions, it runs along the Zhaik or Oral River. It is no coincidence that two Kazakh cities, Oral and Atrau, claim to be on the border between Europe and Asia. Hello. How's your morning? Good. Let's go get lunch. One for you. And one for me. <sighs> How'd it go this morning? Good. All good. Yeah? Done everything. Super. So, uh, fish and chips? Okay. Chicken cutlet okay. with mozzarella and two sprites. Okay. okay, and we're sat outside on the table. Okay, thank you. Excuse me. Yeah. How are you? Hi. <laughs> Name's Tony. Noor. Noor. Yeah. Hi, yes. I'm Linda. Linda, nice to meet you. Where are you yes. from, guys? Manchester, England. Manchester. Oh wow. Yeah. Good. Yeah, you're you're I'm local, actually. Yeah, thank you. You're local. Yeah, I'm local. Yeah, but your English is very good. Where did you pick up the good English accent? Actually, uh, it was, uh, you know, like I studied in Malaysia. I did my ah, degree right, there. Yeah, yeah I, I have my school here. I yeah, I teach. Uh, I run a little school, just one room, just by ah. myself. Yeah. yeah, I prepare for exams like IELTS, TOEFL, SATs. Uh, yeah, like there are a lot of students who want to. So, so you're abroad. a competitor then. Kind of. <laughs> Are you guys think, teach English too? Yes, we teach oh, English wow. too, and oh, wow. uh, we have a language school, mm -hmm. and uh, we do the same things. Yeah. Oh, great! Well, nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah, nice have a good afternoon. Too. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, good, to okay. good to meet you too. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Now. Bye. <laughs> so just now I was talking with the people who are from England, and English language gives you an opportunity to talk to everyone, especially here in this city called Atrau. You have the opportunity to meet uh, some expats like from England, from America, and that's a very good chance to have a conversation with them if you can speak English. Right. Two okay. Later. So Tony is going to go back to work now, and he's going to explain to you some of the things that he does. Okay. Bye bye. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye bye. So, this is where I work on a Friday and my job here is uh, technical manager for a drone company. Come on in. Hi Nurhan, how are we doing? Oh, I'm okay, you? This is my colleague Nurhan who works with me. What's the problem? So, the problem is we need to do maintenance check of all our drones. Right, okay, I'll get the checklist up on the computer. Mm -hmm. You can do the inspection. Okay, no problem. Okay, super. Okay, so check number one is on the propellers and we check them for cracks and damages. Okay, we have a four propellers. Propeller uh -huh. number one looks good, no visible uh -huh. damages. Yeah. 
Propeller number two, also in good condition. Okay, super. Do the batteries fit correctly? Just check the condition of the battery. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, this one is maybe starting to get a little bit old. Yes, possibly. 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 Yeah, and the last test on that is the safety wire. Is it in place? Ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh, this safety wire. Ah, is it? Ah, yes, this safety wire. Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes, here on the place. And are they secure? And they secure. Good. Good. Okay, check's finished. Thank you. We can put that back in the box and it's ready to go flying. Of course. Super, good job. Together, Nurhan and I perform some inspections every, almost every week on the various drones to make sure that they're good to fly. He's a good guy. Meanwhile, Estonia was testing the drone, Linda was teaching English classes at her own school for employees of oil and gas companies. This was made for me by my daughter, um, and he sits here and watches everyone. Um, but we do have some students for today, and I will go and find them now. Good morning. How are you? How are we ready, Linda? Yes. How are you? Let's go and use this table over here. Is everyone comfortable? I thought today we'll do some brainstorming about food. What food words do you know? Of course, fish per mag. <laughs> fish per mag, okay. One of the um, most. Bausaki. Uh huh. Yes. Let's try doing it now with the alphabet. So you have to think of something with A. A. Yeah. Food with A. Uh, apple. Apple. B. Banana. By the time Linda finished classes, Tony had made his way to the supermarket with an important goal. Finished work, and it's time to go and do a little bit of shopping. Time to do some DIY. Let's go see what we can find. Uh -huh. Not there. Might work. What I'm looking for is something to make a picture frame out of. Something that's not too fancy, but I think this is just what I'm looking for. May you come here? I need two pieces and there is no information. Uh -huh. With a 25% discount. Good. Payment? QR, please. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Ready to go. One more stop. Grab a trolley. And Linda said to pick up some fresh bread. Last thing but not least, if I can find some peanuts. Ah, here we go. Kazakhstan peanuts. Check out. Let's go. <clears throat> so, a little bit of shopping complete, ready for the weekend. Time to find a taxi to go home. Puppy, hello, puppy. How are you doing? Hello, Ruffy. Ruffy. Good evening. Good evening, buddy. Well, this is our house. Welcome. Come on in. 
Let's go. This is my living room here. We have lots of pictures here that Tony's father painted. And we have a cat. <laughs> this is Missy. A few years ago, I went back to England. And while I was at home, uh, my mother had a load of paintings that my father had done. I said, could I take some? So I picked them up, brought them back in my suitcase and put them back in a drawer here. Forgot about them until we repainted this room. And then it was shortly after my father had died. We needed to find something to go on that wall. We put the paintings out of the desk drawer and they fitted perfectly. So now I have a little tribute to my father on my lounge wall and I can look at it every day. It's perfect. It's finished. That was a lot of hard work. Every single one of those. <laughs> I know I started this bit, but you did all that. Yeah. So we're going to make a frame for this out of that wood that I've just bought. And I think we probably need to go just a little bit inside of here. The couple adores their pets and is happy to own two well-known stepdog breeds from the Central Asian Shepherd Dog family. This is Ralph, our alibi. He's a big teddy bear. He loves Whoa. everybody and he loves to be fussed. Yeah, don't you? And this, this is Akaru. She's our Tobit and she's very special. Recently, the president um, said that this, this breed must be preserved. And that's what we're trying to do, preserve this breed. They're a wonderful dog. Very, very loyal, very good. Good working dogs for farms, out on the steppe. And their favorite treat? Is sausage. Ruffy, sit. Ruffy. Good boy. Our two puppies, these are our family here and they're great friends. So one of the reasons we bought this house was because we have this wonderful open space. And this is where the dogs play and a bit of space for us to uh, hang out of an evening. And here's the youngest member of our family hiding at the bottom of the garden. This is Axel Rick. And Axel Rick is the last one of our five Tobit puppies that we got this year. And hopefully this one will eventually go to a new home. Tony and Linda enjoy meditating in the gazebo in the autumn garden as evening falls over the city. Okay, so we came here uh, 12 years ago. Um, we came, well, when we came here, we'd never heard of Kazakhstan. Um, Tony was offered a job. Yeah, um, went for an interview in London and the guy said, yeah, well, you've got the job, um, but it's in a place called Kazakhstan. So um, we came out here in, first of all, July 2010. Yep. For three weeks. It was really hot, really dry. We arrived here at five o'clock in the morning. No idea where we were. Very social community, expats and locals. So we have a lot of friends here lots of things to do. Um, so many people say that Atarau is boring. It really isn't. Um, you just have to find things to do. So we spend a lot of time um, by the river. We bought this house two years ago, two and a half years ago. Two and a half years ago, yeah. Um, luckily before lo lockdown. Um, so when we had lockdown, we had all of this space. Tony had his workshop. We would just come outside and have a barbecue. Um, so we, we definitely brought it at the right time yeah. um, because I think we'd have been crazy if we were stuck in an apartment um, for, for all that time. There is enough work to keep me going um, as long as I'm going to stay in Kazakhstan and that's going to be for a few years yet, I hope. We've, well, we, we set our own two businesses up here and they've been reasonably successful. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we have um, lots of different um, work projects. We, we decided to stay because we had a nice life here. Um, we had lots of lots of friends, lots of different connections, 
and not really, uh, apart from family, nothing to go back to England for. We're, we're not rich, but we're happy, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I hope you are. <laughs> <laughs> So, yesterday we looked at the uh, picture and now it's time to get it mounted. So let's get started. Bit of a project for us today. So we need to make a box 90 by 35. Just doing stuff. There's always something to do. Now, should sit absolutely perfect. Linda, time for some assistance. Okay, so now this goes on top of here. We need to get it square. You just bend the two sides down. Bend the two sides down. Ah, well, twist it around then. Should just be the right size. Be about right, yeah. mm -hmm. That should be about right. What's it look like from a distance? It's the first time you've really seen it from a distance. Yeah, it looks good from a distance now. Yeah. There we go, it's finished. And that's what it's gonna look like on our wall when we put it up later. So, job well done. Time for a cup of tea and then we're off to the market. However, Tony and Linda were waiting for a trip to animal shelter before heading to the market. As a result, a knock was heard at the gate closer to noon. How are you? Good, how are you? Ooh. Hey, привет! Привет, давай, Лизебока! Are you okay? You're doing well? Yeah, good, good! Yeah, oh, finally, Did finally! Did you have a good holiday? Yeah, it was a good holiday and now finally first weekend and as usual we're going to the shelter, of yeah? Course. Of course, that's so what this, we do. This is my friend Anna, she yeah. runs the one of the um, local animal rescues. Hi, and we're gonna, go, we're gonna go. We're gonna go and see her shelter today. Whoa! <laughs> Tony, how oh, ready to go? Hope so. Fantastic. Good, good, good. Tools Let's in the go. Back. Nice yeah, to see nice you. to see you too. Yeah, you got your bag. Got Women your bag. always forget bags. <laughs> See puppies? Puppies, oh, yeah. which were you know, I told you, puppies. six puppies were brought to to our place. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is new puppies. Somebody just disposed them near the gates.
Anna, the shelter's founder, is assisted by the entire world. In addition to volunteers and philanthropists, this is Nikolai, a loyal and dependable assistant. From sunrise until sunset, he is busy with the residents of the shelter. Some people ask me, why you need this? Why you spend your time every time? Weekends, days, your salary, your force, your uh, efforts, your soul, and so on. But our dogs are like babies, but only in the way that they have no rights, they have no chance to speak for themselves. And of course, you come here and you feel that you are needed, that you can give them something that will give to them comfort. Tony is not only an expert in aircraft and a jack of all trades, but he also enjoys conducting culinary experiments. He cooks for special occasions, including his signature Tony's sauce. Alexa, 70s party music, please. Play the music you requested. Now, this that we're cooking tonight is a homemade recipe, and it's different every single time. So we make it up as we go. So the first thing we need to do is we need to brown this meat. There we go. Need to get some onions in there, some garlic in there, and then we'll put it on to cook in the pressure cooker so it cooks faster and it'll be nice and tender by the time we finish. Follow that with some nice cloves of garlic. Four. Four. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. Alexa, time of 40 minutes, please. Okay, everything's in the pot. The lid on. And wait for an hour while that cooks. Linda, hello. hello. <laughs> hey. Hello. Hi. These are my guests. This is Irina and Camilla and Diana. And they're coming for some dinner today. Hoschkeldenis, Kleisen. Come on in. Let's go and see what Tony's up to. He's in the kitchen, of course. Tony, oh, I guess hi, we're right. How are you doing? I'm glad you've come. The washing up needs doing. Yeah. <laughs> hi. Hi. How is Scotland? Good. Great. Good. Right. Great. Washing up's there. Get on with it, OK? <laughs> Linda and Tony were our English teachers. We've been knowing them for four or five years. I love them because they're always funny, they have smiley faces. Our lessons became more interesting and fun, but also really hard. They, uh, I always wanted to have a native speaker to talk every day, to talk every lesson, only in English, and my mind just became more in English right now. As she said, we're uh, more than friends. Because uh, we uh, visiting uh, each of the, our house, we uh, making some barbecue, all this stuff. Okay, chef's privilege. See what we've actually made here. Oh yes, nice piece of meat. Shh, don't tell anybody. Perfect. There we go, carrots, lovely. I need, and some sauce. Ah, oh, delicious. And some extra sauce. Thank you. Here we go. Wow. Ooh, wow. this looks good. There you go. So, preparation is finished. Time to eat. Our nice yellow carrots, roast potatoes English style, nice soft piece of beef cooked in the pressure cooker, and 
Tony's spicy tomato sauce. Time to enjoy my food. Living next to the river and not sailing is not at all English. Fortunately, Tony was also successful in this. And this is a day that both sailors and rivermen will appreciate. Nobody here yet? Nope, just us. Nice, quiet Sunday morning. So here we are, Sunday morning. This is where we come and spend a little bit of relaxing time. We're down by the river here in the Ural just south of the city center. And today we're going to do a little bit of sailing and a little bit of playing on our power boats. But this is somewhere we can come and relax. It's so quiet and peaceful. This is our friend's house. There they let us come at the weekend. Uh, we've got our boats, we've got our sailing boats, and of course the barbecue. And we've cooked some wonderful food here. Time to get ready to go and do a bit of sailing. Wind's up. So these boats came from England a very long time ago. And myself and my friends have looked after them, kept them sailing. These are what's called a laser. They're a sort of beginner's boat, but they do sail them internationally in competitions. They can go quite fast, but they're ideally suited for sailing on this river because it's not very wide. And as you'll see later, you have to spend a lot of time making turns. So today is very quiet um, here at the river. Sometimes we have lots of people here, sometimes not so many. Um, today is a very quiet day. I think maybe it's too hot for lots of people to come out. Um, so we're just going to have a quiet day by ourselves. That was pleasant. I only had it on its side once. Not wet though, so that's a good thing. But uh, yeah, there are lovely boats to sail. Great fun on this river. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed that. And now it's time for us to take the motorboat out and we'll go and have a look at the uh, river from a different viewpoint. So all aboard, got our life jackets on, we're all ready to go. There you go. <laughs> okay, let's start her up. quite a long way down the river we're about halfway to the Caspian Sea over there on my left is where we take the boats in and out of the water in the winter and in the spring we'll go a little bit further down the river probably another kilometer and you'll see that we're almost out of the city and uh, I can just see in front of us actually on the edge of the river there is a heron starting to do some fishing we'll see if we can sneak up on him quickly so about 100 metres in front of us, on our right hand side, just on the edge of the shore, you can just see a heron. There he goes. That's the end of a couple of days with us. We hope you've enjoyed joining us in after hour and seeing what we do. Uh, it's time for me to go and get a refreshing drink now. And uh, it's time for us to say goodbye. We hope you enjoyed being with us. Bye bye. We say goodbye to Tony and Linda, the heroes of our program. We're confident that they will spend many more sunny days on the river, enjoying peace and quiet while sailing on a motorboat.